how we spend. All right, Jim Rogers, the legendary financier, said this 10 years ago during an interview with Forbes, Steve Forbes and, Steve For and Forbes magazine. He said, there's going to be a huge shift in American society, American culture, in places where one is going to get rich. The stockbrokers are going to be driving taxis. The smart ones will be learning to drive tractors so they can drive tractors for the smart farmers. The farmers are going to be driving Lamborghinis. I'm telling you, you should start Forbes farming. Wow. Now that's saying something. Uh, here to discuss this with me is renowned market guru Rebecca Walzer. Rebecca, I mean, he might be onto something there a little bit. It feels like with inflation, the value, I mean, look, uh, off the teleprompter for two seconds here, folks. I took this job because I know you out there, we have a family farm, and I, I, in my heart of hearts, the American agricultural sector, Rebecca, with inflation actually hitting as well, will be the wealthiest, most underserved investing class in America, right? Yeah. And he's saying yeah. that's exactly where we are, where we should be really reaping the rewards of that. So I'll turn it over to you, but that's how I feel about it too. Well, Jim Rogers is an all-time great prognosticator of future events. So I am fully in support of his statements. And you know, Scott, there's there's absolute truth to this, way ahead of his time. Because if we look like we look at black the Black Stones, the Black Rocks, the Vanguards, what are these groups doing? But they're going out and private securitizing neighborhoods, real estate. I mean, one of the largest owners of private real estate in America is the Blackstone Group. So what what we know that we have a massive billion buying up lots of American farmland. Way, I mean, why? Somewhere, some of our billionaires are the largest landowners in the entire country. China's bought up a lot of our Midwest bread basket. This is a problem because we, we went so global and we outsourced all of our supply chain so much, Scott, that now it is coming back to haunt us. We are not self-sufficient. We are dependent on China. We are dependent on other countries for importing a lot of our food, even though we are a huge, great, you know, uh, bread basket ourselves we still rely a lot on imports and 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 therefore um, I a hundred percent agree when you look at the securitization of real estate and farming in these last uh, 15 years I think that Jim was ahead of his time on that statement well you already mentioned China is one of the bigger landowners but you know you're, you left one guy out Bill Gates I mean that's right there's other very very wealthy very very smart people now I'm not sure that they could have foreseen the inflation situation you know hitting us this hard within the last 10 years but that's a, that's just a double whammy in their favor because they're getting long things that are going to be very important especially when it comes to making food but at the same time like I just said this investor class the American agriculture almost gets ignored but they've got more money than everybody else because they own the land and they produce these very expensive crops now. And that's why the, this, this investing class, um, I'm having a lot of fun talking to them because these are things that they're right in the middle of it all. There's, and especially, then you throw in um, commodities like oil and the ranchers out there. I mean, they've got all these oil wells on their plant. It's, I'm happy, you can tell I'm halfway excited, but there's a lot of work to get done because we've got to make sure these folks know, you know? I know. We, well, we have to we have to take back ownership of our own supply chains to the extent of sustainability. You know, there's so much talk about sustainability in the environmental uh, ESG, CSR movements, and that's oh. all great, Scott. But at the same time, we've got to be sustainable at home. We need to be able to feed domestically our population. And basically, you know, if we can do that, then the, if we can self-sustain on our own continent, you know, then what happens um, and transportation, shipping, all those things, you know, we increase the cost so much to just get our, you know, stuff from China if that we could make in our backyard that we just outsource because we wanted, you know, all the lower paying jobs to go overseas. So the American landowners are experiencing a rebirth of uh, wellness and richness. And it reminds me of the TV uh, series, The Yellowstone, and it's a great series of uh, the American Midwest. I know. got a good story about that off camera sometime. But yeah, you're right. And, okay, and so, good. And it's, and I'm, I'm excited to be a part of that because this is where it's going to be and where it's going to be here for at least the next five years. And you know what? The way we work has changed, right, because of the pandemic. So everything's really kind of done a little bit of a reset. It's, I don't want to be overblow it, right, because I don't want to be hyperbolic. But at the same time, yes, there has been a little bit of a flight to the to farms from the cities. People have left the big cramped high rises because they want to have a little bit of space in case there is some sort of another lockdown again, which I would totally be against no matter what. But there mm -hmm. has been a, a generational shift here. I don't know how long it's last. I'm not going to say it's going to last forever, but for the next four, five, eight, maybe 10 years, the American agriculture is going to be right in the middle of it all. Yeah. And that's wonderful. I'm so glad to see it. It's about time.
Yeah, all right. Thank you very much. I knew you'd be the perfect person to have on for that story, okay? That's Rebecca <laughs> Thank Walzer. Thanks for coming to us today, Rebecca. You're awesome. All right.